Welcome all to the first playoff round of Total War League Siege Season 6. Today we have Perkelly taking on Big T Tylus in the city of Zarmazegatusa. This is Game 2, a link to Game 1 can be found at the top of your screen. If you're interested in joining Total War League Siege, a link is provided down below. Now let us take a view of the contenders and the armies they have brought to the field. Starting us off with the attackers from Perkelly, we have RDAI played by Hagi. Pairing powerful noble hoplites with effective Thoreos units. Next up their ally Seleucid played by Mia the Cow Queen. Seleucid will be called upon to spearhead the assault. On to the defending side from Big T Tylus, we have Erevasi played by EE, going for the fear factor with four painted warriors. Next up their ally Bactria played by Lysander, building a skirmisher corps to match Seleucid. Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back in to the city of Zarmazegatusa for this week one of the playoffs. We have game number two here between Perkelly and Big T Tylus. Big T Tylus now on the defense. We have Bactria and Aravasi taking on Seleucid and RDAI. Some pretty stacked armies here in terms of skirmisher units. I think RDAI has a bunch of Illyrian Thoreos. Yes, Illyrian Thoreos. We've got the Syrian heavy archers from Seleucid. But over here on the defense, we've got the Balearic Slingers, and I think we also have some Mercenary Syrians here as well, some Persian Lights, and maybe a Scorpion. Yeah, there it is, Greek Scorpion. So it should be an interesting battle here. This is the capture point, once again, for those of you who are just now joining us. This is the capture point for Zarmazegatusa. Attackers got to get there, defenders got to defend it. If you haven't seen game number one, it should be somewhere up here at the top of the screen. I do highly recommend checking that out if you want more context to this battle. But this is the first week of the playoffs. This is the first matchup of the playoffs. But this is game number two of this matchup. So without wasting any time, let's go ahead and speed this up. I will see you all when we get into the nice, glorious combat. All right, folks, here we are. We do have some troops from RDAI. Mercenary Celtic Warrior is going to start advancing on the Bactrian Hillman. Here comes the charge here. It's looking glorious. There is the charge. Celtic Warriors should be able to get a lot of kills off that charge. They do have way more charge bonus than these Bactrian Hillmen, but I don't think the Bactrian Hillmen even charged. Surprisingly, they're not taking too many losses. Scutari here getting hit by the artillery. There's actually a scorpion inside the settlement as well for the attackers. Going to hit these Scutari, mess them up quite a bit. Celtic Warriors also going to get engaged here with the Scutari. We have Illyrian Noble Hoplites and Thoreo Spears moving on up. We've got four units of Balearic Slingers opening fire. We've got the Greek Scorpion opening fire here. I think the Scorpion for the attackers might actually be firing at the Balearic Slingers here. As they are very bunched up. Erevasi needs to loosen those formations up a little bit. But Scutari here getting completely surrounded on all sides. Taking peel it of the butt as they're engaging these noble hoplites. We did actually shave off quite a bit of time here. It was about 36 minutes when I started the fast forward, and we're now 10 minutes past that. Ballista here with 60 kills. I mean, this is a very easy spot for the defenders to hold. I mean, these archers right here can just get perfect sword side shots into these units. This unit of Celtic warriors is actually facing the wrong way. This unit's showing its rear. This could be devastating. Just one or two volleys can flatten this Celtic warrior and save lives here. You gotta save your troops' lives. The Syrian heavies, however, will get the first shots into the mercenary Syrians. And that is a concern. These Syrian archers over here do also have the opportunity to make their way outside the settlement right there and start firing in. However, the first couple of units starting to waver here. Scutari gonna waver. The painted warriors going in. To the Illyrian Thoreos. Gonna get flanked by the Celtics as the Thoreos falls back. Painted Warriors don't care. They're keeping the charge going. Very interesting approach here. For the attackers to bring a Greek Scorpion. along with the defenders bringing a Greek Scorpion. I mean, obviously from the defenders' point of view, yeah, you want to bring a Scorpion. But it was interesting for the attackers to bring one, because normally you don't bring a Scorpion on attack, you know? But judging by the fact that most of these battles are going to be fought right here, as this is like the main avenue into the city, if anybody does attack from this direction, it would make sense 
I mean, RDA, I definitely plan for this. He's got a lot of Illyrian Thoreos and Scorpion units to just kind of light these guys up. But the Scutari here starting to win the fight. The Celtic warriors have been broken from the field. More Scutari get engaged. These Illyrian noble hoplites combat even, but I don't think they're winning against these Illyrian, or I don't think they're winning against these Iberians here. But just more Scutari painted warriors over here having a field day. Scutari with their flanks exposed, getting shot by the slave slingers. They're getting lit up. They are cutting through this Thoreo spear though. But oh my gosh, look at the javelins coming in. Personally, if I was RDAI, I wouldn't even waste my Pila on the Iberian troops. The Iberian troops do not have a lot of armor. Most of their armor comes from their shield. I would quite literally just sit here and shoot them with my slingers. Slingers can kill Iberian factions very easily. Scutari, Iberian swords, anything like that. Iberia's, Iberian units are very lightly armored. We have 45 armor, I guarantee you most of it's the shield. So, with it being mostly on the shield, they don't have a whole lot of armor to negate any actual missile fire, so they just kind of die. I think the noble fighters are like the one unit that can actually, like, take... Pila, or not Pila, but like takes slinger fire and not just get completely destroyed. But for the most part, a lot of the Iberian troops, they don't have a whole lot of armor, so they do die relatively quickly to any form of skirmisher fire. So unload the slinger ammo into them. Save the Thoreo spears for the Thorax swords. Thorax swords are way thicker, man. 75 armor, and it's actually on them. I don't know if that makes sense. Like they, I think it's like 30 armor for their shield. Maybe like 50 on them or like 40 on them. I, I know they actually have armor on their body. Similar to like a noble fighter. They actually have armor on themselves and it's not just all in their shield. So they're going to be a little thicker. So I'll throw the javelins into them. But I mean, Scutari are also going to tear up these Thoreo spears. It's also another thing you got to keep aware of. These Thoreo spears are not going to do well against... Units with high melee defense and high melee attack. We do have some Syrian heavy archers firing sword side into the thorax swords. Oh my gosh. Melting them. HP damage on the first volley. Second volley is going to start causing some serious carnage. That artillery round just cleaved right through two units of Balearic Slingers. And we actually have some defending archers opening fire into the noble hoplites there. These archers, honestly, Syrian archers, don't even worry about the thorax swords. Just level the Scutari, man. Just level the Scutari. Kill the Balearics, level the Scutari. I mean, yeah, you could kill the thorax. It's a good target. But, I mean, the Scutari are going to die way faster than the thorax. Just, like I said, once again, most of their armor is in their shield, not their actual body armor. So once you get through the shield, once you get through that missile block chance, there's not a whole lot stopping the damage of those arrows. Correct me if I'm wrong, of course. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. It is what it is. But if I'm right, then Papa, Papa Bubini's right then. If, if I'm right, I'm right. If I'm wrong, then damn. <laughs> That's pretty much it. But yeah, the Syrians here are in a perfect position to get some nice shots in here. We actually have some Hillmen on the walls chasing off the Balearic Slingers. We got Scutari being forced to engage these Hillmen. And the Syrian heavies are going to move on up. And I think that is one of the first units of Noble Hoplites going to route from the field there. 140 kills, pretty solid. This Thorax getting 100 kills. Artillery just steaming in here, hitting the Balearics. Very good move here by the attackers to try and bait the defenders to move up into this street. Getting them nice nice shots for their artillery. Because look at this. Here comes the artillery. Boom! Going to hit those slingers. Do we have any more skirmishers over here? We have some mercenary Syrians right here as well. I think they cycled them out maybe a little bit. 116 men, 63 kills. We do have some Illyrian hoplites on the walls. Looks like they've taken some losses. That might be what those Syrians were firing at. But the attackers starting to push in here. Hoplites exposing their sword side. 
But yeah, if I was the attackers here, I would say Illyrian Thoreos, I would save it for the Thorax. Have Slingers and Archers just absolutely destroy enemy skirmishers and mess up the Iberian factions. Because just about... Uh, Seleucid, with their Thorax, can take on Bactria's Thorax. Especially if there's also Thoreos Spears throwing Javelins in them. And then, you know, the Archers, they'll just clean up Seleucid, or not Seleucid, the Archers from Seleucid will clean up the Iberians pretty easily. It's just, you want to get rid of the units that are way better in melee while you still have ammo. Especially if they don't have a whole lot of armor and they die very quickly to Skirmisher Fire. But we do have some Balearic Slingers getting onto the walls here, forcing back the Syrian Heavies. But we do have an opportunity for the attacking Slingers to open fire into the defenders. Got a unit of Bactrian Hillman moving back, back across the wall there. Got some Thorax moving onto the walls, another Syrian Heavy over there. Balearic Slingers, though, long shot, hitting the Thorax in the side. They're also going to try and open fire on this Eastern Spearman as they're possibly trying to get into position and knock down this wall here in the rear, getting from behind. But Bactria seeing it all day. Three Thoreos, three Thorax. This is a very large force to have outside the walls to try and prevent a push here and just kind of like hold. But if it works out, it works out. This is very risky, though. This is very, very risky because with these uh, Erevesi units, once again, they don't have a whole lot of armor. The archers or skirmishers just start to whittle them down. There's not a whole lot of Bactrian troops here inside the settlement that can hold back. You've got a few Thorax swords, and one of them's already pretty banged up. But the Balearic Slingers on the walls have turned around, started firing down into the hoplites. I mean, go for the skirmishers, man. Go for the skirmishers. Those skirmishers are going to beat you up. Those slave slingers can get absolutely destroyed by these Balearics. So quick reload. Come on, baby, you can do it. I mean, you have a thorax on the wall right there ready to make an advance. You gotta, you gotta make a decision. Seems like, it seems like Erevesi's just kind of letting his skirmishers die. They're not really getting a whole lot of kills. They're just kind of dying. Here we go, now we got them targeting the Slave Slingers here. But I mean, it might be too little too late. A lot of these units very, very worse for wear. And we've got Thoreos here from Seleucid, also moving up Illyrian Thoreos there, firing. Oh my gosh. That Thoreos spear from Seleucid just leveling the Balearics with a volley of javelins. Actually have this one wavering down to 38 men. The Bactrian Hillman starting to break. This Thorax has an opportunity to kill these Balearics. Will they take advantage of it? I mean, they have some archers right there that could really destroy that, that Thorax sword, but so far the balance of power well in favor of the attackers. And it's just an all-out brawl for this city. Right in one street. They're coming in too fast. <laughs> and that's what she said. <laughs> funny, funny. I love when the, the soldiers like talking and they like have their their little like banter and they're like screaming at each other. I think it's probably one of my favorite things with Rome too. It's very enjoyable to hear. Just adds a little bit more to the immersion. You know, the troops are actually makes you feel like they're actually alive. But we have a Scutari on the walls facing off against the thorax, trying to stop their advance. If we could get a unit of Syrians. To move up right here, fire sword side into that thorax would definitely help out. Bactria still has quite a bit of troops outside the settlement. And we have the scorpion here with 163 kills. Let's check out the attacking scorpion, 155. So the defenders doing a little better, but they did have the ballista with 142. So you're looking at about 300 kills nearly there. So the scorpion's going to have to pick up the pace. They might be out of ammo. I think they are. That's a shame. That is a shame. We've got javelins getting thrown in, though. Lyrian Thoreos throwing Pila, messing up the painted warriors, hitting the Scutari, mostly. But yeah, you you got all these units marching up, all the ammo getting soaked up by these Illyrian nobles. Illyrian nobles able to still get over 100 kills each so far, while also kind of just chopping through, slowly whittling down the defenders. Allowing for more fresh units here, the Thorax Swords that are actually the killing units here. 
gonna be able to have an easier time. Kind of doing a, like, cleanup crew. Gosh, the Pila coming in. Getting crazy here in Zarma Zegatusa. I mean, looking at the attackers, they got a lot of dudes left. They even have... The defenders have a thorax over here, though. But, yeah, the attackers look like they have a lot of troops left. Seleucid still has all of these units outside. I know Bactria has theirs outside, too. But, I mean, it's... In terms of actual unit numbers, I'm thinking the attackers just have more units overall. I mean, the Illyrian Thoreos is not the best in melee. But if you've got, like, three units to surround one of theirs, I mean, it's just numbers. Just quantity over quality at that point. Still have just under 14 minutes left in this fight. We got Syrian archers opening fire into the sword side of these Thoreos. Thoreos targeting the back line, going for the slingers. The Bactrian Royal Guard. Also made their appearance here. Syrian archers opening fire. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much just a grind for this city street. Skirmishers are key in this engagement here. Now, you gotta be careful, though, if you're a defender. The attackers can very easily, with their Thoreo spears, set up their unit to face this way. But they can still throw their pila kind of like that. Kind of like diagonal. So it's very interesting. They can still force you to fire shield side while being able to fire javelins at you like at a different angle. It's, it's very weird. But yeah, look at this. These heavy Syrians barely used any ammo. We got Thoreos with fresh Pila and this Thorax still on the wall fighting the Scutari. Battle Rhythm just expired on that unit. Aravasi running out of troops. It's getting dire here inside the settlement. Defenders might have to start falling back some of these units and they will be forced they will be forced to defend another breach should that happen. But Seleucid sees it, and they're going to start making a move here. Thorax moving up. They can see the Thoreo starting to fall back. They know the defenders are running out of troops. Even the archers are getting ready to join the fray. Noble fighter general here getting shot by the archers as they're on the wall there. Risky bisky. A risky business. Risk it for the biscuit. I don't know. Coming up with phrases here. We got some fresh, fresher thorax joining the fight. Still, still got these noble hoplites. We have uh, some Illyrian Thoreos. Whoa, wait a minute. Illyrian Thoreos, 120 out of 160 men broken, frightened by enemy unit. Wow, those painted warriors just scared 120 men. They're like, yo, dude, that guy's that guy's got ketchup all over his face. I can't do that. Not a chance. That dude eats burgers very, very mess messily. I don't know. I don't know the word. Very disgustingly? I don't know. Smearing ketchup all over their faces. Warrior paint scares them. Frightens the weak-willed men. But the thorax, though. The thorax stands strong. That dude just got his leg cut off. I mean, it's the archer fire that really does it. You just have, like, these melee engagements. You're just fighting here head on, like, oh, yeah, the enemy's in front of me, and then all of a sudden half your unit just gets leveled by arrows, and you're like, oh, my God, the terror you must feel. If this was a real-life situation, imagine you're just standing here fighting to the death. Your enemy is in front of you. You think that's all you have to worry about, and then a hellfire of arrows comes in and just slaughters your entire unit. Oh, hold on. We got the engagement outside the walls. Thorax swords engaging Seleucid's thorax. They are outnumbered, however. Well, actually, no. They have a similar thorax. They just kind of position them a weird way. Eastern spearmen going to charge the Thoreos. Thoreos probably could have actually won off the charge here. They chose to charge, but Eastern spearmen are going to take some losses there. Pila going up. Going to start firing. Thoreos also firing here. 
And we have the Thorax Swords looking to make a move on those Syrian heavies, but they were able to get away. Back inside the settlement, the defenders starting to get encircled. We only have archers holding the front line. Painted Warriors, a final Warriors. unit of Painted Warriors. Bactria's General, a Thorax. We have Erevasi's General, and I think we have that other Thoreos that finally made their way back in. Not looking good for the defenders. And we even have the Scutari on the wall starting to break. That Thorax still fighting. It's been fighting for like 10 minutes now. But we have the Heavy Archers trying to get into position, getting some sword side shots into these Thorax. I mean, it's a pretty even fight here. This unit definitely not having a good time, though, getting two on one. Where is the other Thorax? Here he is, trying to get away, trying to get around here. And they're going to start firing into this thorax, dumping, in dumping ammo into him. But this one's going to get surrounded. This is actually a very good move for the attackers. It's kind of bad for the defenders to have taken this engagement because now you have five units that are forced to fight to the death out here. And they don't have a whole lot to defend this breach. Or, well, this street. They're running out of troops, so you have effectively locked down five units that cannot... Oh, hold on. That's weird. You can't... You can't retreat any of these units. You have forced their engagement. So now they can't reinforce this this gap. And you definitely outnumber them here. And just so we all know, this is game number two. So if Perkelly wins this, they will advance onto the second round. I think it's the semifinals. Which will then after that, you have the actual final. So the winner of this will advance to the semifinals. So it's on the line. We do have some Thoreos moving along the walls. The Syrian Heavy is getting on the walls as well. Yeah, it's looking very dire here for the defenders. Factory is general engaged. Noble Fighters moving up to throw their Pila before they probably get engaged here as well. Valeric Slinger is going to probably start firing at these guys on the walls. However, outside, the Thoreos have routed the Eastern Spearmen. They are coming back. But the Syrian Heavies are going to be forced to fall back here. And the Thoreos are actually going to turn around the front line here for the Thorax starting to break. This unit of Thorax is actually still fairly healthy. Could probably take on two of these units at once. But the Thoreos going to charge into the Thorax, take him on. Going to hit him in the back. However, they do have their back exposed to the Syrian heavies. That is not good. Painted Warrior is going to charge in here. Yeah, as I expected, skirmishers and... Some nice Thoreos on the wall, just shredding. Shredding Bactria's general. They don't have anything to combat it. And actually, I think they have that Thoreos that just charged up onto the wall, but it's not going to be enough, dude. It is not going to be enough. Bactria's general down to 67 men. General is still alive, fortunately. But outside, the Thorax slowly beaten Seleucids. However, with this unit, probably going to have a harder time. To fresh the Reos. It's getting close. Six and a half minutes. This still could go either way. We do have all the generals kind of engaged here, excluding Seleucids, but Seleucids has taken losses. Down to 126. This noble fighter. They don't have a whole lot of ammo left. This noble fighter can cause some serious damage. Like, I'm talking three, four hundred kills, but I think Bactria's general has probably died by this point. Nope, still alive. The Rayo Spears trying to hold the line. Oh, it's getting risky here. Syrian heavies opening fire. I mean, they just, I think the attackers just have so much ammo left. But this Thoreos unloading ammo into the back of this Thorax. This Thorax here starting to win the engagement. But the thing is, even if they win this fight, what are they going to do? Are they going to get into these siege towers and get inside the settlement this way? Like, I don't, I don't see how they're going to get back in the city without having to run all the way back here. And that's going to take a lot of time time that the defenders do not have. We have Headhunt going up there. Second wind. Illyrian Noble Hoplites. RDAI's general engaged with Erevesi. This is not going to go well for, for RDAI. Definitely need to get some skirmisher support in there, and they do have it. Painted Warriors getting encircled as well. The Illyrian Thoreos running down Bactria's general. The general has fallen for Bactria. And they're in. The attackers are in. The streets have been lost. It is a final fight. 
Erevesi might get lucky here and kill the RDAI general, but it will not be enough. They'll probably rout the rest of RDAI's forces. Outside, though, Thoreo spears getting absolutely shredded as they retreat from these archers. They don't have any cav to run these guys down. They're going to be forced to immediately fall these guys back. They could potentially get back into the city and, and help out, but, I mean, it's not looking good. RDAI's general has fallen, though. Erevesi's general may be still alive. Erevesi's general is still alive. RDAI's general is dead, though, but there's just so many units here. So many good units, too, left to just encircle this Erevesi general. He's only got 136 kills. The archers definitely getting the better of him there. Wait, did they just do second wind? Okay, that might have been the Royal Peltis there doing second wind on his allies' general. Archers are going to run these guys down as they run away. But we have some Seleucid Thorax swords just kind of routing some of these finished units here. Killing the scorpion. Yeah! Dollar store daggers. They're like, yo, you've been shooting my guys. Now it's revenge time. Oh, not Pila throwing time, though. Yeah, they completely flattened the unit. There ain't a single man left alive. Not a single man. Lives to tell this. Oh, there's actually one man that is living to tell the tale. You can see that on the far left. One out of 40 men remain. Where is he, though? Where is that mad lad? Is he a part of this group right here? Oh, that's the Bactrian general. Dude, I got no idea. I have got no idea. But it's looking like it is over. The final units that remain are Bactria's Thoreo Spear on the wall, a Thorax, and two depleted Thoreos, and they just, they just have so much. So, so much. And they gotta follow these units back into the settlement. They're gonna be exhausted. Capture point is gonna start falling to the attackers, but let's look at the carnage here, man. Let's go. Cinematic. Oh, hold on. We got dude fighting over here. Oh, oh. Oh. Kicked in the face. The absolute disrespect. All right, hold on. Let me, let me go back to my camera. Look at the carnage, though. Look at this. This is basically like four armies worth of troops just dead in one spot. Oh, my gosh. The dead litter the field of this one street. Then you have the few units scattered throughout back over here. And then you have the actual battle that was fought outside the walls. This was a very... Very well taken engagement here for the attackers forcing these units to be engaged so they can't fall back and defend. Yeah, that's that's a lot of that's a lot of dead dudes. A lot of dead dudes. But I mean it's not really looking we just have some Thoreos, they're running around. I'm just going to go ahead and speed this up. This game is definitely lost. It's probably just going to be the final units getting run down. But I'm going to go ahead and take a look at these final battle results. We're going to go ahead and speed it up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please feel free to pause the video on anybody that I click on if you want to look at individual kills and statistics. Starting us off, we have Erevesi, played by E.E., e. Bactria, played by Lysander, RDAI, played by Hagi, and Seleucid, played by Mia, the Cow Queen. I do hope you guys enjoyed this siege battle. This was game number two between Perkelly and Big T Tylus. And with this match concluded, Perkelly will advance on to the semifinals. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. That's all I have for you guys today, and I will catch you all later.